excuse me, and not B3, B2. My bad. Right, so subdivision of two lots, just under 19 acres, and then rezone from R1 and B1 and B2 to all combo, uh, or all um, one B2. That's correct. All, all is, a, um, okay. Well, there's 10 listed conditions. You're in agreement with those? Yes. And then the uh, findings of fact for the commission. Um, any questions from commissioners? Uh, just a point of information for the commissioners and the applicant. On the right of way that's to be vacated, we're reviewing that now. Uh, there does appear to be some drainage in there, and we're going to have to make a determination whether or not you know, your your uh, applicant's going to actually inherit that drainage, not just an easement. He may inherit the pipe if it's not got any uh, okay. city, city drainage you, going through it. Well, so that's going to become that. private drainage. It, it could be. We hadn't gotten to that point yet to, okay. to see exactly what all is going in there. Uh, at a minimum, it's going to be a, a, an easement. It's going to have to be retained. Right. Typical. I expected but that. But it yeah. is possible that that the system is going to become his as well. We just don't know exactly where, exactly how it's all connected. Okay. Any further questions or comments from commissioners on this application? Is there anyone else here in the audience to speak for this agenda item at 3300 Knollwood Drive and 3401 and 3421 Medical Park Drive? the Norwood Place subdivision. Anyone here to speak against it or have questions on it? All right, seeing none, we'll move on. Um, this is an ex is extension of an application, a dual application of a subdivision at 5400 Hamilton Boulevard and then a PUD at the same location, the S. Feller Industrial Park subdivision. Uh, is the applicant present? Yes, sir. Name and address for the record. Bruce Smith, 457 St. Michael Street. Uh, we're just requesting a one-year extension for the subdivision input so that we can finish the conditions that were set forth to finish the land disturbance requirements, um, making good progress. Just need a little more time so we can finish those up and get the subdivision recorded. Question for staff, is there a specific time frame on this extension request? The extension would be good for one year. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Since it's on the agenda, I'll ask if there's anyone here to speak for this application of extension. Anyone here to speak against it? All right. We'll move on to the new agenda items or, or new items uh, for the Planning Commission to consider. Number six, this is a subdivision at 50 Common Street, the Parker's Common subdivision. It's a uh, one lot uh, at a quarter of an acre. Applicants present. Mr. Bird, there are eight listed conditions. If you're in agreement with those and any, any further mm, comments. I'd like to revise number two. That's about the street radiuses. Um, we have had some conversations with city engineering department would like to revise number two to be provide a radius at the intersections if deemed necessary by city engineering department, not necessarily make it a requirement. There'd be a radius there. I'll oh, defer right. to our commissioner, Mr. Amberger. Yeah, I believe the recommendation says says just that. Unless a smaller radius is approved. Dedication well, sufficient to provide 25 foot corner radii at the intersections of Caroline and Common in compliance with 6C6 of the subregs unless a smaller radius is approved by. So that that's the way it reads. Well, it says with radius, but of course we'd like to eliminate the radius since all the utilities are in place, sidewalks are in place, curb and gutters are in place, um, radius is not really necessary. Well, and I think, let me, let me address that, because this, this comes up on, on numerous occasions, especially in the downtown area. That is generally a standard note to, to meet a city standard of a 25 foot radius. We've had in discussions that we leave that in there, and I know we have to keep revisiting it, because there could be those occurrences where we need to do it. 
uh, and almost in most situations, we do waive it. We don't require it. We don't make a change. But if we've got a scenario where we hypothetically have an oak tree or a power pole or, or that one off of something and we need to go through that process, uh, I've just, just discussed with my staff that it's better that it's in here and we, uh, we modify it every time if needed than to take it off and then we miss it one time. Because if we miss it one time, we never have the ability to come back in and clean it up at a later date. Uh, so, so that's the reason you keep seeing it over and over and over. And I would just ask that we, you know, you work, you work with the, the staff on on doing it. If there's nothing there and there's not a conflict, we're going to actually leave it just like it is. But when we get down into the weeds and we see that trucks are driving over it or there's some other something else in that built environment where we need a little bigger piece, you know, yeah. to, mainly to accommodate the sidewalk. That's the main thing we're, we're, we're trying to make sure fits. That's generally the only time we're going to ask ask yeah. for it to actually right. be dedicated. Well, we can look at it on the ground and see if there's a problem with cars going around and jumping the curb. And yeah, I, I think your concern is accommodated with the with the note that's in here, and you know, unless there's just something out there that's that's warranting it, uh, in all likelihood, the engineering department would approve it. Yeah, as is. Yeah, well, it's fairly small lot anyway, and to take a 20 or 25 foot radius off of it is is really hurting the size of it inevitably we have a live oak tree planted right on the corner or a traffic signal pole we got things of the past <laughs> we're having to deal with so. uh, the way it's written though it does note that the planning commission would have to waive the corner radius requirement of the subdivision regulations so the planning commission could waive the subdivision regulation requirement but require coordination with city engineering for the provision of a radius if determined necessary but it needs to be modified. The note needs to be modified to that. Well, the planning commission does, based on how it's written, need to waive the 25-foot requirement to yeah. allow coordination with engineering to allow a potentially smaller one. Yeah. So as written, if the if commission votes and approves it as written, he's he's where he needs to be. Am I reading that? Am I hearing well, correctly? It says, and the planning commission waives section 66. So that would still appear to require the 25-foot radius. So we could modify it to allow the planning commission to waive that section, but then change number two to say coordination with city engineering to provide a corner radius as determined necessary by city engineering. Okay. And the, the middle of the 25 feet yeah. reference, which is what he's asking for. Yeah. yeah. That's fine. Got your notes, Nick? <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> modify note number two for Burke. I'll go ahead and ask, is anyone else here to speak for this agenda item? It's 50 Common Street. Anyone here to speak against it? Number seven on the agenda, 2066 Andrews Street, the Cheney Edition subdivision. It's a subdivision of one lot at five and a third acre. There are eight listed conditions. The applicant appears to be present. Name and address for the record and then reference the eight conditions. Uh, if you're in agreement, any other comments or questions? Good afternoon, Nick Haji, uh, representing the on the general contractor representing the homeowner. She's an applicant in the disaster recovery program for the state. Uh, address is 2066 Andrew Street. We agree to all conditions. Your agreement with all the conditions? Yes. Fantastic. Is anyone else here to speak for this agenda item? Anyone here to speak against it? Uh, Mr. Uh, Chairman, I would like to note that condition number one uh, discusses Andrews Street, which has a substandard right of way of 40 feet, and we're either recommending dedication to provide 25 feet from center line or waive the right of way dedication requirement and then perhaps require an increased setback. Um, as noted in the staff report, this subdivision overall was developed in the late 1930s or platted in the 1930s. So all of the other properties have the same narrow street issue of 40 feet. And so the commission has that ability to waive the actual right-of-way dedication and just require a slightly additional increased setback. Mr. Haji, are you, uh, did you hear what he said? <laughs> Talking about the 25 foot yes, setback? Sir. Okay. So do you have any questions or concerns regarding that 25 foot setback? Not at this time. So we're, he'll, you're, you're putting it in the in the hands of the commission to, to move forward with what we think would be the right way. 
Yes, sir. We can. All right. Did I already ask if there's anybody else here to speak for this is your title? You want to speak against it? 2066 Andrew Street. All right, seeing none, we'll move on. Thank you, Mr. Haji. Mr. Chairman, I have a question. Go ahead. And staff. Have any of the, what has, what's the circumstances with the other lots? As I look, look at the aerial photo, the, 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 the setbacks all look to be about the same. Have, have they dedicated the five feet? No. Or is this the uh, first one that's come this before? Is the first one's come through the process. There hasn't really been any dedication except, for, as noted in the staff report, I believe, for just one lot further down the street. Okay. All these other are older homes uh, based on the late 1930s plat, okay. which are less than 25 feet from their front property line. So they're planning to build back with a similar setback with the new house, which fortunately with the revision of the zoning orders, they're allowed a reduced front setback in this part of Mobile. Okay. Any further comments or questions from commissioners? All right, seeing none, we will now move on to agenda item number eight, 2208 Fairway Drive, the Daily Pollard subdivision. Subdivision of one lot at a quarter acre. There are 10 conditions listed. I'll ask if you're in agreement with those and any other questions or comments, name and address for the record into the microphone. My name is Patrick C. with Person Services, uh, 4474 Halls Mill Road. Um, no issues with the conditions. No issues with the conditions. Is there anyone else here to speak for this agenda item? Anyone here to speak against it? All right, thank you, sir. Moving on to number nine this is a subdivision 250 dogwood lane gilliard oaks subdivision a resubdivision of lot four is the applicant and this is a subdivision of one lot at a, uh, about a third of an acre is the applicant present are you in agreement with the seven listed conditions the applicant is present and in agreement is there anyone else here to speak for this agenda item at 250 dogwood lane Anyone here to speak against it? All right, seeing none, we will move on. Agenda item number 10, it's a subdivision at 431 Azalea Road, West Mobile Masonic Temple subdivision, a resubdivision of lot one, proposal of, uh, of two lots at 1.85 acres the applicant appears to be present your name and address for the record and also sir there are nine listed conditions i'll ask for your agreement or any questions or comments towards those yes i'm newton cromer uh 7241 pine court in sarah land uh, i am representing the west mobile, west mobile masonic temple and we are in agreement with the conditions provided by staff fantastic any questions or comments from commissioners Mr. Chairman, I have a comment on um, I, condition number three. Yes. We, we note that provision of a 25-foot minimum front yard setback for both lots. However, in the staff report, we noted that for lot two, since it doesn't have street frontage, that that front setback should not be required. So, so that would be a strike of number three? Uh, just say for lot one only. Uh, thank you. So, Mr. Cromer, what he just said was... Um, only lot one will will have a 25 front yard setback because it's road front yes sir all right the rest of is deeded ingress and egress to lot two so you're in agreement with that yes all right thank you is thank anyone you. else here to speak for this agenda item number 10 431 azalea road anyone here to speak against it all right seeing none we'll move on agenda item number 11 is a dual application at 5501 I can't even read it because it's got a big number, a big withdrawn written across of it. Now, just to confirm, this application has been or will be withdrawn. That's correct. So number 11 is a withdrawal. Final agenda item, dual application, subdivision and rezone. South side of Ziegler Boulevard, west of Ziegler Circle West, extending south to the north termini of Avenue A, 
Fifth Avenue and Harding Boulevard. This is the Cypress Place subdivision. 209 lots, 80, over 81 acres, and a request on the rezone from single family R1 and community business suburban B3 to all single family R1. Applicant appears to be present, your name and address uh, for the record. And then on the conditions for the subdivision, there's 13 listed. And then for planning commission consideration, we have seven findings of fact and three listed conditions on the rezone. Go ahead. Hey, good afternoon, commissioners. Evan Gertz with DDG, 3703 Old Shell Road here in Mobile. And here uh, to answer any questions you might have about this requested subdivision and rezoning. I do have uh, two or three um, questions or potential revisions on the conditions for the subdivision under condition number six. Um, I, would, I would ask that perhaps that condition be revised to read that the plat is revised with the right of way for Holly Lane, as in we'll extend the right of way to the adjacent parcel, such that, that parcel is no longer landlocked. Uh, right now it just reads that we'll extend Holly Avenue I believe the intent's the same. Our our client intends to maintain access for that owner through whatever phases of development happen. No issue with that. I just ask that that be revised to read right of way instead of extension of Holly Lane. And then through for item number seven, um, I would ask consideration as we're working through city engineering with access to the south side of the property um, that while we're going through this commission approval, we consider adding uh, Fairway Avenue and Harding Boulevard as waivers to that section of, as waivers from that section of the uh, ordinance so that we can work through that south side access with city engineering. And then on the rezoning condition number one, is really more of a question it indicates that the condition should be completion of the subdivision process. And our question just would be, at what point would the rezoning be complete? As rezoning is gonna continue on to city council and then the subdivision really is, will not be complete until all improvements are constructed and the final plats approved. So at what point is the rezoning finalized? I will take these questions in reverse order and I'll defer to staff on that last question with respect to the process. So the rezoning process, you can go ahead and move forward with that if it's recommended for approval by the Planning Commission. Um, the actual rezoning won't be applicable to the property until a subdivision plat has been recorded for the property to make it a legal lot and eliminate all the split zoning on the property. Okay. Is there a timeline associated between the council approving of the rezoning and the necessary completion and recordation of the final plat? Well, if the Planning Commission approves the plat, it has a one year lifespan um, and it will probably take you a while, of course, to build all the streets. So you might need to apply for an extension of approval. But once the uh, City Council has made their decision, in, in this case, perhaps approving the rezoning, that is in place. So it does not need to be renewed. Thank you. We're in agreement with all three rezoning conditions if, with that clarification. Okay, on the reason you're, you're good to go there. The street names that you listed, I'm just trying to make sure. I'm Going back to number seven on, yeah, the, 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 on the subdivision. Yeah, I'll take you, let me go to number six with you. If you look in the center of the property, there's, there's, there's a part mark, not a part. There's, a, there's a, essentially a landlocked parcel that exists there now. Um, there's, I guess, what you would call a prescriptive access easement as they have access across the adjacent property, but there's nothing in the record. And so what we're proposing is as we subdivide this and dedicate right-of-ways, the street that is nearest to that uh, is what we're proposing as Holly Lane. It's the one that goes north-south. And so we intend to allow access to that property per the condition, whether that be via access easement um, or an extension of Holly Lane I guess what, what we're asking is we may, it may be beneficial to the property owner to not build Holly Lane any closer to their property. They may, they may want to access from the end of Holly Lane. We're happy to push to dedicate the rest of that as right of way so that their property line adjoins city right of way. 
we would just like the condition to read that we'll extend the Holly Lane right of way there. The actual limits of the street construction to be determined. You know, we we want to do we want to provide access for that property in a way that makes sense for them. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. President, go ahead. Um, so just just for clarification, at the moment, uh, the way this is all drawn out, um, you're, you're coming in off of Ziegler um, through the parcel that you're seeking to rezone. Um, then you get further down, and we're talking about Holly Holly Lane at the moment. Um, so that that will not connect. Just for clarification, that will not connect to Fairway Avenue. So that is is correct. If you, in our additional comments and communication with staff. We are requesting the flexibility to continue evaluating that access connection. Our client's preference is that we do not provide open, full access at Harding and Fairway Avenue on the south side of the property. We're trying to work through the logistics of having a gated, emergency-only secondary access there. So, and just for clarification for your client, um, what your client's understanding or your client's request is, is the only way in or out at the moment is off of Zuka Boulevard? except for emergency vehicles. Okay, which were up in question that you just said we're looking at potentially expanding there, making that a gate, I guess. I'm sorry? Uh, uh, potentially that could be a gate or that could be something, you know, but right now there's there's no access to fairway, I guess. Correct. We would prefer that that, well, as it's shown on the plat right now, we have a right-of-way extended there where we would like to gate that access, but we need to work through that with staff if that is acceptable under the code or how we would accomplish that. It is our desire to have an emergency access there as a secondary access for that neighborhood. And I, I think, um, I mean, what is fire code on that um, uh, staff? This, the city of Mobile has not adopted Appendix D of the fire code. And so the secondary access is not required based on coordination with fire, but we would like to have just for many reasons, right? If there was a lot of road work happening on Ziegler in the future, the opportunity to have that temporarily opened for access, yep. or if there is an accident or some emergency need to have a secondary access that has, you know, for example, Knox fire access at a gate um, would be favorable to the community. Councilman Woods, I believe actually the, the fire department has adopted portions of Appendix D, but the requirement for two points of access to a residential subdivision, I think even at the state level, uh, that was waived as a mandatory requirement okay. and that is also then applicable here in Mobile as to not require two points of access to the property. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And my question on that, I, I know we had one applicant on a different subdivision brought before us the idea or the concept of gating something that opens to everybody. If it was keypad gated, well then it becomes a private street, but if the gate opened to everyone, then it can be gated uh, and it would, it would be allowed. So I'm just, I'm just I'm, I'm throwing that out there. That was what, if you were thinking about some sort of gate, I think that's where you end up with is it's a gate. It's not necessarily a knock box gate, but it's a gate that opens to all traffic potentially. Am I, am, I, am I correct on that or is that, we still don't have a final ruling or guidance on that one? Well, as it relates to this application, I don't think that staff was under the understanding that a gate was being considered for the connecting point here. So condition number seven was specifically to waive any sort of cul-de-sac requirement for, uh, Ave for Fifth Avenue and Avenue A, perhaps, where they uh, abut the other part of the property. Okay. So one, one more question for you then. So are, are, we, are we correct in hearing there's no codes that have been adopted that require that secondary access yet? Okay. And then back to the applicant's request on seven to include Avenue A and Fifth, and then also to include Harding and Fairway. Was it that your, your request? One of the reason for that is that I believe that if there was some talk from staff that we may not be allowed to gate across what we would have as Holly Lane if that were a public right-of-way. So we may have to revise a portion of that or stop the right-of-way short um, of the prop of our current property line of fairway avenue in which case the same waiver that is listed as a condition for avenue b and fifth avenue would be necessary for the end departing boulevard and fairway avenue as well and so my request or our request is really just to add those two street names 
And if we need to add to that condition, you know, as coordinated with city staff for gating of Holly Avenue, that would be great. I would just, I just have, trying to have a little foresight on solving the gate issue and that if we did gate that, it might require the same waiver for those other two streets. And one more, one more question for the staff uh, on that part A, that little out, that little internal out parcel. Uh, it looks like it's surrounded completely by either private lots or common areas. Should, should a right of way, should a, should a public right of way not go all the way to it? That's what he's discussing for yeah, Okay, okay, man, I was hearing it, hearing it wrong. Right. And also note that where um, Fairway and Harding come to the property, they are in a point and it is paved in that area. So you can drive from one street to the other street without having to go onto the applicant's property. So I don't know if a cul-de-sac requirement would be triggered at that point. Um, I'm looking at the, looking at the proposed plat that's up there, and again, it's I don't see where any public right of way touches that lot. But that's what you're. That's what he's saying. If they would extend. Yeah. Like yes. To be adjacent. Okay. Yeah. It is. It's the Hammerhead Street directly below, not a park. And so, yeah, condition one of these conditions reads that we would extend Holly Lane to that. I'm just asking that it. I'm asking that it be revised to say we would extend the right of way of Holly Lane or provide an easement to say. Yeah. I think that, I think it's going to be the right. We're in full zone. agreement. We yeah. we're going to provide access to that lot through all phases and and permanent configuration. Can I have one more question, if you don't mind? Um, uh, I guess for staff. Um, so what we're saying on number seven is that we're going to waive the. Uh, we're not going to mandate a cul-de-sac for Fifth Avenue, and I guess Avenue A is that. Right, I believe Fifth Avenue is paved and in use with a mix of business and residential uses on there. But um, in order to provide the cul-de-sac, the applicant would have to provide it on their property, yeah. um, which would take out some of the lots. Yeah. And then Avenue A, I don't think, is improved. While it exists in right-of-way form, there is no actual pavement yeah. on Avenue A up to the property line. So um, should a, um, a vehicle, let's say the largest fire truck that the city has, needs to go down Ave uh, Fifth Avenue, um, how do we, uh, there's not a cul-de-sac requirement. So well, right now it has to back up. Okay. So any, even the garbage truck would have to back out of the street okay. as it is now. Okay, and um, just a waiver, I mean, I guess the your recommendation for that is uh, based on just, uh, I guess what you're saying is that they just have to, they'll just have to do it, I guess. Well, it's not, it's not fair for, to require them okay. to take, to build, the cul-de-sac on your property when it's not benefiting them. When what about um, if they were to do a hammerhead there, come in and do a hammerhead? Still would have to take part of their property. Okay. All right. Thank you. Didn't we just have uh, a street somewhere out there where we were trying to make them put a hammerhead on somebody It was the property. Beehive property, I believe. It was, it was the one on Moffat Road that, yeah. Did we make them build a hammerhead? No, uh, we voted against that one. Okay. I'm just saying. Any further comments or commissioner questions? Does everybody have their notes on conditions six and seven on the subdivision? And then back to the conditions on the rezone. The applicant is in agreement after discussion with staff. I'll ask if there's anybody else in the audience that is here to speak for this agenda item on Ziegler Boulevard. Is there anyone here to speak against it? Or have questions for it? Yes, ma'am. So please come to the post if you have a question or just want to make a comment. And your name and address for the record, and pull the microphone down a little bit. Grazie Ella Machino. I own a lot on um, Sixth Avenue and Avenue C. And I want, it's hard to make out that map from over there. And I'm wondering if this is going to be bordering my backyard, and how are these people going to get in and out? It looks pretty landlocked. Based on the map that I have on the screen, uh, Chairman. Sixth Avenue does not touch the site in question. 
So it's just a few, maybe up to 100 feet away from the actual property that's under consideration today. Does that answer your question? My question is, how are they going to form some type of exit to leave there and to this property? I mean, it's really the primary entrance is listed off coming off of Ziegler Boulevard. That just happened to be on the dead end of one of the avenues. C, so I was just curious how they're going to be using that avenue C to get in and out or eventually use it for emergency purposes. I'm thinking ambulances, fire trucks, things like that. How are they going to get? So I'm just wondering how the traffic and the environment is going to be once all this stuff is done. It, what, what we have in front of us doesn't show it connecting to Avenue C in any way. Got it. What we have in front of us doesn't have it connecting to Avenue C in any way. We can see. That's my, that, that was my concern and my question. How is this going to impact the environment? I mean, it's pretty wooded there. And how are those people going to get in and out of there? Well, the, the applicant went through all of the, the processes and, and their procedures uh, to conform with, with staff and the recommendations. All right, that was it. That was my question. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the audience here to speak against this application or have questions towards it? All right. Seeing none, we will close the public hearing session and go back in our agenda items to number one for deliberation holdover subdivision at 3768 spring hill avenue subdivision of two lots over five just over five acres nine conditions listed the applicant mr cummings was present and in agreement move to approve subject staff recommendation properly moved and seconded all in favor any opposed? The motion for subdivision passes. Agenda item number two has been withdrawn at 5672 Commerce Boulevard West. The applicant, Mr. Bird, was present or in representation of them in agreement. Application number three, uh, agenda item number three, is a dual application, subdivision and rezone at 5632 and 5572 Commerce Boulevard West. Requested for a holdover until June 20th. Okay. Properly moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. The motion passes for holdover. Number four, dual application. We'll take them separately. It's a subdivision at 3300 Knollwood Drive, 3401 and 3421 Medical Park Drive, and then a rezone going to all B2. We'll take them separately on the subdivision. Applicant was present and in agreement with the 10 listed conditions. Move to approve subject to staff recommendations. Second. Properly moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? The motion passes. On the rezone, we have seven findings of fact for consideration and the three listed conditions that the applicant was agreement, agreeing to. Move to approve subject to staff recommendations adopting findings of facts A through G. Second. Properly moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion passes. Number five is the request for extension at 5400 Hamilton Boulevard, the S. Feller Industrial Park subdivision. The applicant was present uh, for this dual application. Uh, the extension would apply to both subdivision and PUD. This would be for a one year period. Second. Properly moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. The motion for extension is passed. New agenda item number six, subdivision at 50 Common Street, one lot at a quarter acre, eight listed conditions. There was discussion on number two. The applicant was, uh, is present and uh, in agreement on those eight listed conditions with discussion on number two. Move to approve subject to staff recommendations, modifying note number two. Properly moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. The motion for subdivision at 50 Common Street passes. Number seven, 2066 Andrews Street, Cheney Edition subdivision, one lot, five and a quarter, five and a third acre. The applicant is present 
eight listed conditions in agreement with those eight listing conditions. Move to approve sewage staff recommendation. Mr. Mr. Chairman, yes. May I ask the commissioner a question? Uh, we we entertain uh, waiving the right of way dedication and just allowing the reduced setback. I would move to amend my motion to waive that uh, requirement. Second. Amended motion. Properly moved and seconded. Everybody hear it. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion for subdivision passes. Number eight, 2208 Fairway Drive, Daily Pollard subdivision, one lot, quarter acre, 10 listed conditions. The applicant is present and in agreement. Move to approve subject to staff recommendations. Second. Properly moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. The motion for subdivision passes. Number nine, 250 Dogwood Lane subdivision. One lot, third of an acre, applicant is present and in agreement with the seven listed conditions. Move to approve subject to staff recommendation. Properly moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion for subdivision passes. Number 10, 431 Azalea Road, West Mobile Masonic Temple subdivision. Two lots, 1.85 acres, applicant. Uh, Ms. Cromer is present and in agreement with the nine listed conditions. Revision to number three, suggestion to go to read only lot one. Move to approve subject to staff recommendations amending uh, item number three to read uh, lot one only instead of both lots. Second. Properly moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. The motion for subdivision passes. Number 11 on the application is withdrawn. Number 12, we'll take them separately. This is the subdivision south side of Ziegler Boulevard, Cypress Place subdivision. Uh, the applicant is present. 13 list conditions. We had discussion on number six of the conditions and then number seven of the conditions. Entertain a motion. Move to approve subject to staff recommendations uh, with, uh, with regards to item number six, requiring the, the extension of the right of way uh, in lieu of the cross access easement. I don't believe there were any, any, any changes to seven. I think they were. Well, was any questions on number six? Um, I guess, uh, so, so what's on the table here is that we're going to allow a, we're going to allow a gate of some sort or, or a barrier of some sort, um, between the 200 and some odd uh, houses, which Mobile uh, drastically needs or very much needs, um, we're going to allow a gate of some sort. Um, I guess is that is that's what on what's on the table. I guess he mentioned that it, we're fair at the bottom of the plat. We're fairway tied in a holly intersects or adjoins the property that they are considering putting an emergency gate there for fire trucks and ambulances. Um, and I think there have been several of those around the city already. Uh, so that access would not be open on a day-to-day -day basis to the general public or to the residents. Yeah. But really your decision is not, before y'all is not whether or not we allow them to build a gate. It's just, it's great. Um, the they don't want the, the, they don't want to have to, they won't leave that right of way open for that purpose without restricting their access to Fairview Avenue. Is that a it, fair way to say it? And uh, also before that, is there a way to put a condition on it um, upon approval of the fire department, I guess, or is there somebody at the fire department that we can, can sign off on that? Yes. I think fire department traffic engineering and engineering 
review will be required okay. uh, for any proposed gate. So it's not an automatic approval. So if this is an issue that, that they see arises, then they can address it at review, I guess. Okay. And we're just, we're just not handcuffing them, per se. I would agree with that. The, the, the thought is they'll, they'll probably end up like a large apartment complex that has a gate yeah. with a knock box on it that, that the fire department can access. That's probably where they land. But we'll have to let them submit what they want to submit. Now that we've had that conversation, I think I should say I can express it a different way. He wants, I believe, correct me, he wants seven, I'm sorry, six to include, no, I'm sorry, seven to include Fairway Avenue. He wants if, Harding, in, in, Bert's, in Bert's opinion, in Bert's opinion that he expressed now, Harding Boulevard and Fairway Avenue pavement are connected. So I don't think that we need any modifications to seven if staff's in agreement. But if, if you could foresee a condition where that would be a problem um, and, a, and a, a hammerhead or a cul-de-sac would be required, then we would ask that those two streets be added to the condition. So just leave it at, yeah. Again, condition number seven is requiring the provision of a cul-de-sac or turnaround. Yeah. And since these two streets connect such that a vehicle can travel around without having to do a turnaround, I don't know that they should be listed. Yeah, so we should leave seven as is then. I agree. Leave seven as is, and then, as I stated earlier, require the, the right-of-way to extend uh, to, the, to the internal yeah, part. We're just asking to insert behind the word Holly Lane, insert right-of-way. That's, That's correct. the request. Yes, sir. I'll second the motion made by the city engineer. We have a, on the subdivision, we have a properly moved and seconded motion. I'll ask for a vote all in favor. Aye. Any opposed? All right, the motion for the subdivision passes. And on the rezone, the applicant, uh, after discussion, was in agreement with the three listing conditions, and Planning Commission has seven findings of fact for consideration. Move to approve subject staff recommendations with findings of fact A through G. Second. Properly moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. The motion for rezone passes. That concludes the agenda items for today. We have a handwritten other business item from Mr. Anderson. I'll uh, turn, it over, turn it over to you. Thank you. Just one uh, brief comment or announcement. Uh, last meeting, which I was absent, I apologize. Y'all denied the application for a subdivision on Moffitt, the Hive or the Beehive, whatever it's called. Uh, the owner, the applicant has hired an attorney and filed, appealed it to circuit court. So we'll be handling that in circuit court. Thank you for the update. Any further business items for today?